Recently, Dave and Mr. Egan were awarded Larry with his very own branch line. The trainee pulls consists of his two passenger cars, Penny and Kennedy, along with any freight that's due that day, meaning that Larry's trains are mixed trains. He loved the new responsibility and did the job well, but the praise and the importance started to go to his smoke box. One day, they arrived early at the end of the line. While they're waiting to take the train back, his driver decided to give his whistle a good polish. Later that afternoon, as they were making their way home along the main line, Larry passed by two streamlined and his own sighting. He gave a loud whistle to say hello to them. That's the grandest whistle I've ever heard, said one. A whistle like that demands respect, said another. Thank you so much, Larry called them as he passed. No streamline engine had ever given him a compliment before. Larry puffed into South Plainsville Yard, blowing his whistle loudly. Why are you blowing your whistle like that? complained Sarah. Yeah, it's Marquise, where's the fire? There is no fire, puffed Larry proudly. I'm just letting everyone hear my magnificent whistle. What's so special about it? snorted Sarah. My whistle shows a certain level of importance, Larry explained. And being as I just received the branch line, it does fit. Your whistle's anything but important, scoffed Sarah. It's more annoying than anything. Larry was cross now. You can't talk about whistles, he snapped. When people hear yours, they do more than just get out of the way. They run for the hills. Marquis started laughing. You know what? began Sarah, but before she could finish, Larry puffed quickly away. Penny and Kennedy weren't pleased by how Larry was acting. You shouldn't have said that to Sarah, said Penny. You'll pay for that, added Kennedy. Don't worry, girls, said Larry confidently. I'll be just fine. The next afternoon, Dave asked Larry to take a special load down to the seaport after taking his last branch line train. When he arrived in the harbor, he saw Taylor and Chris, and all he could do was complain about Sarah. That Sarah, she had the nerve to call my whistle obnoxious. Who does she think she is? Um, Larry, said Chris, she must have so much ash in her smoke box. She says things about my whistle when her whistle sounds like something you'd hear in a horror movie. Larry, Taylor puffed. I shouldn't even worry about her. The streamline edges know better. You know what they say? They said, Larry! Larry! What? Oh, oh, that's just great. You clumsy crane. Well, that's done it, sighed Larry's driver. Your whistle has been damaged by that falling crate. Oh no, cried Larry. My beautiful whistle. My beautiful whistle. It's dangerous for engines to run without whistles. So Chris had to pilot Larry to Harmon Works. When he arrived at Harmon, one of the shop workers inspected his whistle. Well, I got good news and I got bad news. What's the good news? The good news is I can fix your whistle. And the bad news? The bad news is it won't be ready till Sunday. So you have to use this temporary one. The spare whistle was fitted. Larry took a deep breath and... What the hell? said Larry. That whistle doesn't sound mighty or important at all. As well as either you take it or you can't do any work. The shop worker said. Larry had just gotten his branch line and he didn't want to get taken out of service already. I guess it'll have to do, he said. As they was tightening the whistle, Larry had a thought. Sarah, I have to try my hardest not to whistle around Sarah really anyone for that matter but especially Sarah she hears this whistle I'll never hear the end of it the next day Larry went back to work on his branch line the weather was so hot that he had to take a refrigerator car with him so he could drop off ice to all the stations Larry liked being on his branch line it was isolated and away from everybody else so he could use his whistle without anyone hearing it actually went well for Larry. Well, until... Mm. Oh, for crying out loud. Get out of the way. Move. Let me through. 
Larry tried wishing steam and ringing his bell, while his crew tried to physically move the cow off the line. But nothing worked. Larry, said his driver impatiently, just cut the crap and use your whistle. Larry looked around. He didn't see anyone and decided he would blow his whistle. But just as he was about to use it, Sarah and Tony Ann came around the curve. Larry, what are you doing? Asked Sarah. Can't you see I'm blocked by a cow on the line? Yumed Larry. I tried ringing by bell and wishing steam and she still won't move. Why don't you try your whistle? Suggested Tony Ann. Larry thought fast. Um, uh, well, look, Tony, um, when you have a whistle as prestige and as important as mine, um, you don't use it for um, minor inconveniences um, such as this. It seems like this minor inconvenience is making you major late, Tony Ann remarked. Thankfully, the farmer had came out after seeing everything and led the cow back to the field. Unbeknownst to him, he also managed to save Larry from any further embarrassment. See, crisis averted, said Larry quickly. Um, I'll see you two back at the sheds later. And he took off like a jackrabbit. Sarah and Tony Ann were puzzled, but decided it'd be best not to question what just happened. The next morning was due to be the hottest day of the summer. Mr. Egan addressed the engines about it before Dave gave out the jobs for the day. It's going to be extremely hot today, Mr. Egan said seriously. I need engine crews and engines to all be careful today. Understood? Yes, sir, replied the engines. Now I will turn it over to Dave to give you all your assignments. Um, thank you, Mr. Egan. Um, first off, um, Christian and Kevin. I'd like for you two to help Taylor and Chrissy on the coastline. With this hot weather, we're expecting extra passengers going down to the shore to get away from the heat. Larry, two jobs for you today. I'd like for you to deliver ice to all the stations on your branch line again. And then in the afternoon, I need you to go over to Denville. Mr. McCormick needs you to pick up a train of lumber and take it to Middletown. Larry collected his refrigerator car and set off down the branch delivering ice. One more day, he said. All I have to do is get through today, and tomorrow I have my old whistle back. He finished his morning run on time and then went to go collect the lumber. As they made their way along the line, Larry's driver looked at the sky. Those clouds look like they could open up any minute, he said. No sooner had he uttered those words, as if by magic, it began to rain heavily. This is just fantastic, groaned Larry. As they rumbled through a junction, they heard a hissing noise and then the brakes came on. What could have possibly happened? He asked. Probably just a broken air hose, said his driver. I feel bad for the conductor going out to inspect it in this mess. Larry looked at the track beside him. Track doesn't look right, he thought. And as he peered closer, he gasped. Oh, that's, that's a sun kink. Sometimes hot sun can bend rails on the track. Those are referred to, as Larry just said, sun kinks. Meanwhile, Sarah had just finished her run to Middleton and had turned around to go back to South Plainsville. Why is it raining? She mumbled to herself. Sarah blew a whistle for a grade crossing, and Larry heard it. Oh no! Sarah's on the same line as that Sun King. She's gonna come off the rails. Sarah, stop! Stop! We're gonna crash! Larry then began ringing his bell, but Sarah couldn't hear anything because of the thunder and rain. You need to use your whistle, called Larry's driver. Larry knew his driver was right. He took a deep breath and... Sarah heard that. That sounds like an emergency. Her driver, wasting no time, made an emergency brake application while Larry held his breath. Sarah's wheels locked and skidded over the wet rails. Her driver turned on the Sanders full blast to help her slow down. 
then, finally, with a screech and a groan, Sarah stopped just inches from the sun king. Phew, sighed Sarah. Thank goodness I stopped. She then looked over and saw Larry. Larry, that was you whistling like that? It didn't sound like yours. Larry plucked up courage and explained what had happened to his old whistle. He then expected for Sarah to tease him, but instead of teasing him, she said, Thank you for saving me and my passengers. Larry then gave a slight smile. You're welcome, Sarah, and I'm very sorry I teased you for your whistle the other day. And I'm sorry for calling it obnoxious, she replied. The next day, Larry received his old whistle back, and it was looking good as new. Larry thought it sounded louder and better, although he kept that thought to himself. And from time to time, other engines still give it compliments. Hey, nice whistle! But Larry doesn't brag or let it go to the smoke box anymore, because he know if he does, there could be a chance he may lose it again.